low level of real GDP and a business wanted to increase their output, then they could just stick their head out their door of their business and say to all the unemployed people sitting on the curb and so forth, hey, who want Great Depression style economy anymore? You do have lots of people who are working and there aren't so many unemployed people anymore. So the businesses are going to start to compete to get the last remaining workers to come and work for their company instead of the company across the street. So this person says, "Hey, come and work for me come for come and work for my company because um we want to increase output." And the worker says, "Uh instead of saying, "Okay," they say, "Well, I don't know because I had an offer across the street and they said they'd pay me more." And you say, "Oh, okay. Well, well, I uh, really want to increase output, so I'll pay you more, right? I'll pay more." than what they're offering. And so if you hire this person to come into your company and you offer them higher wages in order to get them to come, then you're going to have to raise the wages of everybody else who you have hired to work for your company because it's not fair if you pay new guy more money than what you pay your workers who are already working for you. So you have to raise everybody's wages in your workplace to get this person to come work for you and that's going to increase your costs of making your product and so if the cost of making each skateboard or something like that increases because your workers demand more wages like the maximum amount of output a country can make it means all of their scarce resources that are available are making goods and services it will increase product prices and so that's why as they get higher and higher wages you're not going to increase output it just drives the price level up so there's that's the three sections of aggregate supply but most for this unit, you need to draw all three parts. So you have to draw yours like this for this unit, just so that I know that you understand there's three parts to short run aggregate supply. Just like in the loanable funds market, where supply and demand intersect, that's equilibrium, and that determines the real interest rate in the economy. Where aggregate supply and aggregate demand intersect is also called equilibrium, and that will determine the real GDP that will be made and purchased in the economy. So that determines the actual level of real GDP in the economy. It will also determine the price level in the economy. Whenever you have an equilibrium point, make sure to draw a guideline over to the y-axis and label it and down to the x-axis and label it. Aggregate supply can shift the easy thing with aggregate supply, with aggregate demand, you had to keep in mind all of the things that would change each sector's spending habits. So if household spending changed, then AD changed. If business spending changed, AD changed. Government spending, international sector spending. So you had to do that do it, stab them, G trippy thing. There's lots of things to keep in mind when you shift AD. When you shift aggregate supply, however, it's pretty easy. For the most part, you just have to remember that the thing that changes aggregate supply is per unit production costs for the businesses, for the business sector. With aggregate demand, it's all four sectors that are purchasing, that are demanding to buy goods and services and are spending for those goods and services but with aggregate supply there's only one sector that supplies goods and services and that's the domestic business sector and the only thing that affects their decisions of how much to supply is going to be based off of their per unit production costs. If their per unit production costs decreased like their workers accepted a pay cut then that would mean 
that they, the businesses could supply more product at every possible price level. That's one way to think of it. Or you can think of it as since their costs decreased, for the same quantity, they could charge a lower price. Either way, but what it's going to look like when aggregate supply increases is a shift to the right. And that happens every time that per unit production costs decrease. If per unit production costs were to increase, then you would have the opposite effect. You wouldn't, as a business, be able to supply as much of your product at the same price level because your costs have increased, or you can think of it as having to charge a higher price for the same quantity. In either case, it's going to be a shift to the left of aggregate supply. Always think of shifting aggregate supply and aggregate demand when you shift the curves around. Shift them to the right or to the left. Right or left. Increase and decrease. Do not think about shifting these curves up and down. Don't ever phrase them as shifting up or down. It will lead you into um, difficulties. So always to the right or to the left. These are factors that will change both aggregate supply and aggregate demand. An example, the last one, a change in business taxes. If business taxes were to decrease, then we know from studying aggregate demand that when business taxes decrease, that gives the businesses more money to buy capital. So investment spending would increase, which means that aggregate demand would increase. But a decrease in business taxes is also going to decrease a business's per unit production costs, and therefore it will increase aggregate supply. So in that situation, both aggregate demand and aggregate supply would increase at the same time, and the result would be that there would be an increase in real GDP, but the change in price level would be indeterminate cannot be determined because we don't know the relative size of each shift. Graph that out to make sure you understand that concept. Subsidies are the opposite of taxes. If the government is taking taxes from a business, they're taking money from the business. But if a government gives a company a subsidy, that means the government is going to give the company money just to make their product. So they just want to encourage that company to make their product. The subsidy is going to decrease per unit production costs for the business, and so aggregate supply would increase. 